Hey guys, Jay here, welcome to Yons of Violence. Today I want to talk about the don'ts and don't evers of tabletop wargaming. I've been loving this hobby for a long ass time and I've discovered some things that are magical and awesome and keep me super invested in the hobby and a bunch of stuff that I really wish I had known before I spent a bunch of money and wasted a bunch of time. This list may have some controversies and basically every single bullet point is going to have a bunch of asterisks after it, but I want to share. And the first thing that I want to share is don't have a pile of shame. Like unless you really want to, but really piles of shame are bad. The way things should work is you see a model, you get excited by that model, you purchase it, you take it home, you put it together, you paint it, and then you have it. I have done that numerous times and it always feels extra special and magical when you got the box and then you put it all together and then you have it. So that thing that you saw in the store and you're like, ooh, stap speeder bikes for Star Wars Legion. I need that, I want that, and you get it home and you get it done. I have also way million times more than that example have saw something, thought it was cool, bought it, and there it sits. Somewhere in my house, sometimes I'm not even sure where in my house does that exact kit exist. Piles of shame, they're a weird thing in this hobby. They're sort of shameful, but they're also kind of a badge of honor. It's cool to have lots of cool things. But arguably, the cool thing is to actually have the miniature done and like ready to use. There's definitely something to be said for like collectors. You know, some people are more collectors or painters than actual gamers, like almost probably more than half. And so it makes some sense to get things that you're like, I know I'm gonna use this one day, but maybe not today. Maybe today's not the day I'm feeling that miniature. It's just don't do it. If you if paint the models that you have so that the pile of shame can exist at the friendly local game store, the Warhammer store. And you can go in with a nice fat wallet and look at all of the beautiful boxes on the shelves. And you don't have to worry about, ooh, I really like those Stap Speeder bikes. But I do have a 12,000 point Lizardman army at home that has been begging me to work on them. But ooh, are those Stap Speeder bikes? Just, just avoid it. A little bit is fine. Definitely be cautious of like those Games Workshop doubles boxes that they do all the time now because you know if you split it with a friend that's probably perfect because you get the models that you want and they get the models that they want even if you own both factions it's still kind of a risk because you're not going to build both of those forces in perfect tandem you're going to be like oh i really really need these models for my elder army and i do also collect chaos space marines so it's good to have those models too but you're going to put together and build the eldar and you're going to put those chaos space marine models off to the side and what, six months later, a year later, you're gonna finally get around to doing those models? You probably won't because six months to a year later, there's gonna have been so many more cool models that caught your eye. So just be really careful and cautious with your hobby purchases and just paint your models. You just gotta get your models painted. A little pile of shame is probably okay, but don't be me. <laughs> don't, don't have tons and tons of stuff. I do have more painted models than unpainted, but like it, it's probably close to 50-50 <laughs> with just the scale tip in every couple of weeks. But a bigger crime than spending a whole bunch of money on models that you don't need, gear. Don't overspend on gear. And this is this is sneakier than miniatures because you remember miniatures, mostly because they're usually very expensive, but like 30, 40, 50, 60 dollars on miniatures that like sticks in your mind, but like, hey, I'll buy some paint, you know, four bucks a pot, three, four, five bucks a pot. If it's a games workshop thing, it's like eight or nine dollars a pot. Those really, really add up. I mean, if a pot of paint is four dollars and you buy a few here and there and like a year later, you have 60 paints. That's like two hundred and fifty dollars of paint. That is like a fledgling Warhammer 40k army or anything you could possibly want for Star Wars Legion or Malifaux. So be cautious now. The tricky thing is that you do need those things, you know, like basing sands, pigment powders, washes, paints, maybe a vortex mixer. Don't buy a vortex mixer. If you have trouble shaking your paint, then the paint mixer is definitely for you. But they're really expensive. They're like 60, 70, 80 dollars. And, and they can burn out because it's just a motor in there. And so if you can shake the paint, you're golden and you can save yourself some money that you can put towards some stap speeder bikes from Star Wars Legion. But uh, yeah, gear acquisition, 
is a tricky one because you also sort of need to buy the gear to know about it. You know, you might see something in a video, but you know, some maybe some dirty down effect paints that are very expensive, but very nice or like a new tool, like a something that can cut some MDF or, or some wood so that you can build some cool terrain. Those things are really neat, but it can also become a big waste of time and you don't necessarily know that until you buy it. So shop around, watch videos. You know, we make some videos. Watch videos of those products being used to see if it's something that you definitely want to add in your army. And if you see something that you like, make sure that it's got a purpose. Like if you're like, ooh, this leaf hole punch from Green Stuff World is really, really cool. And if I ever collected an army that has leaves on the base, this would come in so much handy. But you don't collect models that need leaves on the bases. So maybe wait to make that purchase until you do collect an army like Sylvaneths or something from Age of Sigmar where leaves on the bases would make sense. What I'm trying to say is spend your hobby dollars on models because models are fun. They bring you satisfaction. They're cool toys. Who doesn't want more cool toys? And as much as gear is fun, you're never going to kind of sit there and just look at your dirty desk covered in paint brushes and paints and basing materials and texture rollers. Those sorts of things lead to nice miniatures, but they aren't the thing that gives you satisfaction. So keep track of your hobby gear purchases. Make sure that your hobby dollars are going to the places that bring you the most joy. And speaking of uh, of things of like gear, I want to talk specifically about paintbrushes. Paintbrushes are a weird thing. They're a tool. I mean, they're like the most important tool. Arguably, all you need is a paintbrush. You know, you can you can yank the models off of the sprues if you're just you know, you can't be bothered to have a pair of clippers. You can do that and it would it'll probably be fine. But paintbrushes are really important and paintbrushes can get very spendy. And I think that they shouldn't be. Uh, some people really like um, natural hair brushes. Uh, I have some Da Vinci Maestro brushes that have sable hair and they're very nice. They were kind of expensive. I think there was like ten dollars a brush and they're fine. It's, it, that's going to come down to personal preference for every different hobby. Some people swear by the, the natural hair brushes, and, and I particularly like synthetic brushes because I like to work fast, and so the hard, springy bristles of synthetic is more my style. You only really need four paintbrushes. I think you should have like a good, cheap, get-her-done brush. I buy packs of brushes from Walmart, and those work great. They actually, I actually get some really, really good use out of them, and I probably start every model, like, 60, 70, 80% of the paint job is going to be laying down colors with a cheapy, cheap synthetic Walmart brush. And then once I've got everything kind of blocked in, then I move on to my nice brushes for the final steps. The brushes I really like are the Rosemary & Co. Synthetic Series 313 Size 3. It's a nice fat brush. Another important thing about brushes is don't buy microscopic little brushes. You, that makes a lot of sense in theory, like I'm painting something small, it's got lots of tiny details, I need tiny brushes to paint those tiny details. But you really don't. The sharpness of the tip of the paintbrush is really the only thing that's going to matter in terms of how detailed you can get with that brush. And most brushes out there, I mean the Walmart brushes I buy, have decent tips. Sometimes they develop a hook, but as long as that hook is like, you can always kind of count on it to always hook to the left, you can just use it like that and it'll be fine. Brushes are a little bit subjective and you might have to buy a few to really learn what you like, but you shouldn't own like 50 brushes or even 20 brushes. Like 10 brushes is way more than plenty. Oh, the other brush I like is the Rosemary & Co. Series 344 Designer Liner Brush. That's a brush that has really, really long bristles. And I really like that brush. Uh, it's, it's just kind of what a liner brush is. It's got long bristles that can hold a lot of paint, and so that's really good for fine lines or dotting the eyes and stuff. But really, those two brushes are the only nice brushes I use. And everything else I have is just garbage dry brushes that are actually blush brushes for makeup that I bought from Walgreens, or like $4 for 20 brushes that I bought from Walmart. You don't need to go nuts with brushes because really, the brushes aren't gonna make that big a difference. You'll probably know when it's time to level up with brushes, but it's not about the size of the brush, it's about how you use it. And for, you know, I've been painting Warhammer miniatures for almost 10 years, and it's only started to matter how good my brushes are in like the last two. And before that, any old brush would have been fine. 
maybe challenge yourself to see how far you can go with your crappiest brush because you can probably get a lot farther than you think. And kind of the freedom of a crappy brush is just, it lets you build up a lot of speed. You should never do this, but I do this all the time. When you should never ever take your brush and just put it in your paint cup and let it just sit on the bristles. You should never do that. But if you're working really quickly and just being fast and dirty, you're doing some two brush blending or glazing, maybe it's fine to just take that Walmart brush, just go plunk and just plunk it right in the water just so that you can build up that speed and that confidence. Don't, don't go crazy with brushes. Don't buy like a hundred dollar paint brush set that comes with some fancy things. Brushes are just a tool and be, be careful about tools. But moving away from tools into even more nebulous and scary territory, don't get into miniature war games alone. Yes, it is the hardest thing in the whole world to convince your friends to play Warhammer, like war games with you, but you really gotta. You should not collect Warhammer games. I mean, unless you just are a collector, but if you have the intention of playing these games, you gotta get in with some people because that's just how these things are. And that's what makes miniature war games so great is coming together with your friends or just other weirdos near you and playing these games. That is the true joy of wargaming, not 40K or Malifaux or Star Wars Legion, but stand, you know, standing around and eating pretzels and rolling dice and putting down cards. That is the true joy of miniature war games and why it's so much fun. And so you gotta get in with people. Now, it's really, really hard. There's a lot of good Facebook groups out there, discords. You'd be surprised. One time I was at a uh, hardware store and it was just, you know, looking for dumb stuff. And it turned out that the people who operate, like all of the employees were playing 40K in the basement of that hardware store on the weekends. There's war gamers out there everywhere. You can find them. Maybe go to your friendly, if you have a friendly local game store, maybe ask the store manager, like what kind of games are going on? When are people playing? Is there a night for war gaming? And also probably don't be married to a certain war game. Like if you found Warhammer 40K like online and you're dying to try it, maybe you collected some models and you painted them, maybe don't be dead set on playing Warhammer 40K. If you go to your local game store and you find out that there's a Star Wars Legion night, you know, mostly they play Magic the Gathering, you're not interested, but they'd have a, a Legion night. Maybe show up to the Legion night. Maybe show up over and over and start to get to know those guys. Maybe you can drag them away from their precious uh, Star Wars Legion. Or maybe you just start playing Star Wars Legion because really the real fun is playing with people, not necessarily the war game. It's really, really hard to do, but if you want to be a war gamer and you want to get the most out of war, of, of war gaming, you gotta find your peeps. You gotta probably, you probably have to buy a little bit more than you need. Maybe have your army and a loner army. Really know the rules, read the rules often so that you can really clearly and succinctly explain the rules and be able to compare them to other things like comparing, comparing them to rules in video games or in board games. Also board gamers are super good. They're almost war gamers. It's not that hard to pull them in, rope them into this horrible, horrible hobby we all love so much. You know, and maybe you join them for board games. Board games are really fun. And you know, you, you spend a couple of nights playing board games with them. All of a sudden you're like, hey, you know, I've got this new game called War Cry and some Tostitos pizza rolls and a fresh case of Diet Dew. They're probably gonna come over and, have, and you guys are gonna have a great night, but you gotta try. You gotta put yourself out there. You really gotta be a Warhammer hero to, to, to do it. And you should try and you should kind of almost make a game of it, say, Nobody in this state plays Malifaux, but darn it, I'm gonna play some Malifaux this year. And you just make it happen. You start a league, you start a club, you start a Facebook group, you start a Discord, and you just figure it out. Um, don't just like go on Discord and say like, I live at 4269 uh, South Bourbon Street. Does anybody wanna play Warhammer with me? Don't do that because it's dangerous. But you know, maybe you start talking with people and you're like, wait, do we all live in Cincinnati? Come on over, you know, let those let those things build up naturally. But it's definitely the hardest thing in wargaming, but it's the most important. You got to find people to play with. Another big thing of wargaming is don't force it. Uh, for some people like me, wargaming is like a way of life and every waking moment not spent like doing dishes or 
at your job is spent warhammering, but that's not how most people are. The vast majority of people. For a lot of most people, wargaming is just another hobby, another excuse to fill up the day with stuff. And if you're not feeling it, if you just don't feel like painting your models, don't. Like, play video games, play Minecraft, watch a movie. It's not a big deal. Take a little break from your hobby. And, you know, it's going to feel a lot better when you're hobbying, hobbying when you actually want to be hobbying. And if you're just like, I don't want to work on my Blood Knights, but I really should because I bought them a couple weeks ago. Like, no, just play Minecraft because you want to play Minecraft. And then, you know what? A little while later, you're going to want to paint those Blood Knights and then you can sit down and really enjoy painting those Blood Knights. There is something to be said for for, um, you know, knowing yourself and knowing how you like to do things and knowing that, like, I do want to paint my miniatures, but I'm just not feeling it right now. But if I just do it, it'll get that ball rolling and I'll get back into the groove of it. I think a really good way around that is just giving yourself a tiny little painting task that you can drop at a moment's notice, you know, decide like, you know, I didn't do a great job on the eye lenses of these space marines that I painted two years ago. So I'm just going to take them off the shelf, put them in, put them in front of me and just work on the eyes. And then all of a sudden you finish the eyes and you're like, oh my gosh, these guys are way better than they were before. Maybe I'm going to go grab this rhino and work on that too. Or maybe you're going to work on those eye lenses and be like, eh, I'm just going to watch that new show on Netflix. And that's perfectly fine too. Don't force the hobby on yourself because you're just not going to enjoy it as much. And you should enjoy the hobby. But speaking of enjoyment, maybe the most nebulous idea in the whole world, don't compare yourself to others. It's really hard not to do because our brains instantly start to do it at all times of the day, constantly, always. But really don't compare yourself to others. The most important thing is like appreciating things. And I think most of us tend to immediately jump to critique, but critique is really for other people, where appreciation is for yourself. There's always going to be tons and tons of people who are way better than you at certain things. But better is subjective where appreciation isn't. If you really, really like Stap speeder bikes for Star Wars Legion, it doesn't matter if nobody else does. If you're going to enjoy them and you're going to put them together and paint them and have a great time and appreciate them. And it doesn't matter if your lines aren't straight or your colors aren't good. It's your thing and you get to have it and enjoy it. And if you really if you're really sitting there and you're like, I ah, just everything about it, I don't like I'm looking at other people's posts on Instagram and they're just so much better. And you start to get that little nut in your stomach, it, which happens and it's very natural. Paint is an additive process and you can always go back and change things. You can always work on things. And, you know, maybe if you with a little practice, you can make those alterations. But also, I encourage you to appreciate the things on your work and be like, you know, I blue is not a very typical color for battle droids, but darn it, I kind of like the blue. You know, your your subconscious is an incredibly powerful thing. And, you know, your brain knows a lot more than you do most of the time. And so if you're able to kind of tap into that and like, well, why did I pick those colors? Well, why did I dry brush it that way? And you sort of analyze your own work knowing yourself. You'll start to notice like your own style and the things that you like and the things that you appreciate. And a lot of those other things online will start to look like, well, yeah, well, that's how they did it. But this is how I did it. And they're both completely equal and valid. And if you appreciate your own work, it's going to it's going to be so much more meaningful for you than comparing because you, you can compare everything until the cows come home. But if you really if your favorite thing in the world is diet, Dr. Do, you know, that's what you like. And it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. That is what you like. Those were all the things that I thought it was important to just get out there. All of the things that I kind of wish I knew getting into the wargaming hobby years and years and years ago when my cousin showed me his Tomb King's army for Warhammer Fantasy Battles. It's a wonderful, exciting and expansive and expensive hobby, but there's a lot of really great stuff in there. And so just 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 have fun. And speaking of having fun, you know, what's really fun. Our Patreon over there. We have new monthly terrain packs. This month we have the Dark Factorum, a grim, dark factory full of blood and steel that comes in over 75 components. 
And to new subscribers, we have a welcome pack that includes Dawn of War inspired Space Marine, Imperial Guard, and Eldar Terrain, all hosted by Comics, Games, and Things. And we have a new tier where you can get your name on one of my Black Templar Space Marines so you can join the Crusade. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, thanks for watching.